Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I'm going to talk with one of our old friends, Freddie Mercury in the Afterlife. Freddie has a playlist here at Above Life Channel. Make sure you check out the Freddie Mercury playlist if you are a Freddie fan. Hi, honey. It's nice to see you. It's been a while and he does this kiss thing. Yes, I know. Oh, I love you too so much. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, and he brings a cat, one that is white and it's got a little bit of a gray on its tail, it looks like. Very fluffy cat. So hello, hello. And then he puts it down. Okay, an M name, just so you guys know, for the cat. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, darling. He said, hello, darling. Hello, darling. Oh, you're so sweet. Instantly, Freddie, you come in with love. I want to invite all the viewers to feel the loving, heartwarming energy that Freddie Mercury brings in. This is why people love you. This is why people are waking up to the energy of Freddie Mercury, whether it's through your music, through Queen touring again, through the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. It doesn't matter how, but oh my goodness, this is why they feel you because of all of these vibrations of the heart center and that's why people resonate with you even if they weren't a queen fan or they didn't know a lot about you freddie and the, the human life you guys are discovering his energy now because he is such a loving spirit very loving in the heart space plus i will also say that freddie definitely works with sensitive people so if you're a sensitive person which most of you are news flash if you're watching above life channel you are a sensitive person you are clairsentient, which means you have psychic gifts of sensing and sensitivity. Superpower, by the way. All right. Oh, so lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's come. I know. I know. He's like, I like the hair. I like the hair. Very nice. Very nice. He says, you know, he says, you know, when uh, Princess Diana cut her hair, it was a big deal. It was a really big deal when she cut her hair. It, really you guys was it I did I don't know now Freddie that was a little before my time he says oh, phew. right yeah phew. he makes us like mm. no you're not that young darling <laughs> I'm not I remember there um, the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana on um, television that it was televised. I remember that. I remember seeing excerpts of that when I was young, so like in the 80s or whatever. So I, I do, yes, I remember some of that, but I didn't know that her like cutting her hair shorter was like a thing, you know. He said it made it quite fashion forward. He says quite fashion forward, very European. He says very European, very, very much so, very European. Mm, mm, okay. So, so how are things? How are you feeling? How are you doing? As a spirit, I think people are really curious about this. Like, what do you do? What are you hanging out doing right now these days? As I'm channeling you here in the fall of 2019, what's going on for you? It, it's a special week. Yes, he just said it's a special week. It's a special week. There's, there's a lot of partying going on, he says. <laughs> uh, on the earthly planes, he says, on the earthly planes, there's a lot of partying going on in my name. His birthday is on September, I think it's the 5th, right? He says five. Yeah, he shows me five. Although I gotta say, I feel like the sixth is important and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because the first day of his actual, oh crap, I'm a person now, what do I do? <laughs> oh my gosh. The first day of life isn't the worst, it's the second. <laughs> uh, his early morning, early morning. At, um, I've never been a morning person, you know. Never quite been a morning person unless it's like 2 a.m. And such that changes as you get older um, you rather like um, staying in you know more quiet more quiet evenings are are welcomed mm -hmm. all right so it is your birthday this week in human form so how does that resonate for you in the afterlife like how do spirit do spirits celebrate birthdays because technically birthday is birthing day which means you have a body so can you explain that to the viewers how does birthdays work in the afterlife and do you celebrate that? And I mean, you made a reference to it, so. He says, it's quite different for everyone. You are at will. You can choose how, how you wish to 
the, I can't find the right word, attach or connect to that, the concept of birthdays, that's what he's talking about. For me, I rather like a good time, he says, and celebration and joy, joyful expression. That's probably the best, he says, that's probably the best descriptor of uh, spirit and the understanding of spirit related to celebration, whether it is a birthing day, a birthday, some, the day that someone chooses to come into a life of a body and become a human being in a form, or whether it's some other celebration that um, a human tradition calls for, like, like anniversary or birthday, or anniversary or um, wedding date. You just, you were gonna mention something else, I can't. Anniversary or, he's mentioning another date that I don't know what it is. Feels like a holiday. <clears throat> All right, so Freddie, all right, so birthdays in the afterlife, so do you celebrate them? And he, it kind of sounds like you say, well, it's the choice of the spirit if they choose to do that or connect with that or whether the vibration of the spirit is resonant with that. And it feels like for you, Freddie, yeah, you're absolutely all about the celebration and celebrating life and, and being in that spirit energy of joy. Joyful expression is what he said. Freddie Mercury loves joyful expression, my friends. So party on for his birthday, okay? Celebrate, celebrate the living life that you have, okay? All right, so, but I wanna be clear too because he's making me, he's responding to the question from his perspective, from his like ray of light energy, understanding his own perspective of it, but he's acknowledging that everyone is at will. So you have every spirit, every human, whatever, you have your own choices about that. So it's gonna be different for different people. And does it matter your religion or your practice or belief in the, from the human life that you just had, the one you just had? Assuming, assuming that everyone um, understands that you get the choice to be reincarnated or to have multiple life experiences. Let's just assume that, you guys, as we're watching. Let's just assume that. So Freddie, does religion have a role in that then with your most recent life? So if you believed a certain way in your religion, does that follow through in the death and the afterlife? For some, he said, for some it does. For, for me, no, there, there's really no limitation. There's no limitation. There's no um, mind to, and he uses a swear word, F with you is what he says. <laughs> there's no mind to mess with you. Let's say that. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep it YouTube friendly. <laughs> and so um, there, there's no, he's, he's showing there's no limitation. It's, it's like there's, there's complete freedom. And so there's no um, specific rules or patterns that you follow because that's expected. There's no expectation. There's no expectation, no limitation, no standard of... There's no mind to create the uh, structure or form. It's, it's simply uh, free. He says it's just no limitation is the biggest, the best word. No limitation on that. Mm, okay. All right. Um, people have asked before too, let me just ch uh, check with you. So when you transitioned and since you were in the afterlife, before family and such then did your parents like are you reunited with your parents now in the afterlife like do you did you meet your family again yes he said yes absolutely my mother um, especially requested me to be there at her at her death and so yes I, I came at her death so that she wouldn't be afraid you know I think it's a really nice thing when you can you know show up for your family like that so yes we we as spirit in afterlife have the option to do that an opportunity to do that and he says that's that you know that's that's a gift that um i was more than happy to provide for my mother in particular he says in particular and then he says um this okay so people wonder about this i think freddie because they wonder if is that a soul agreement thing like, did you and your mom and your dad or whoever you met relatives in the afterlife when they passed and they saw you, um, was that like a soul agreement here as a human? Or is that something they requested when they were dying and so then the spirit responds? I mean, how does that, how is that organized? And 
does that happen with everybody? Is that the, the norm kind of a thing? And he says, well, I can't, I cannot speak for everyone. For it is, you know, it's my experience. Um, you would know more than I would about that. He says to me, like, with interpretation of the human experience and the transition, because I've talked to so many people who've transitioned and about their transitions. I've talked a lot to a lot of spirit about that. And it's always different. And it is always different. It depends, doesn't it? There, he says there are a lot of factors. Yes. And the most important one is you, your choice, your, your decisions to to reunite that that's your choice that is your choice so what happens so it's our choice you guys if your loved ones agree you it's our choice it's all of our choice so is that something that you organized before you came into the body or after he says anytime anytime it's always up for um offer and ask invite invitation always up for offer okay he says always up for offer and ask so so either side the afterlife relative or the human the one that's in the body either one of them can ask for this they can make the request of this yes okay and so can someone yes yes of course yes of course and so does can someone else make that request for that person so like if there's someone that's that's um, dying in the process of leaving their body and i'm a relative of that person watching that person leave like say it's like a spouse like husband and wife kind of thing and dad or um, dad is in the afterlife and mom is here, but mom is afraid to transition. Can the, the person that is watching this experience happen, a little loved one, request that dad show up for mom? Can, can we do that as people observing this process? Yes, I, yes, absolutely. I would, he says, I would, I would assume yes. I would, I would think you can, yes. He says, um, I haven't had personal experience with that myself, but you can ask you can always ask you can always ask there's no there's n nothing to be um judged about the asking he says there's nothing to be judged about the asking it's not too much he says it's not too much people need to get over that they need to get over um not asking for what they want because they feel like oh it's too much trouble or it's too much effort or or they're not special or important enough people need to just get on with that get on with that he says get on with that hmm. very well said very well said <laughs> so thank you thank you <laughs> So what if there's a rift? What if there's like a conflict? Like what if um, someone dies and there's, um, they had a fight and the other person's here and the person that died or, or um, in the afterlife, um, what if there was a fight and how do, you, how do you resolve conflicts that happened on the human plane in the afterlife? Can you do that? And can you do that with an afterlife spirit after somebody dies? I, I mean, I... As Bridget being a medium and talking to people for 15 years in the afterlife I totally know the answer to this but we're gonna ask Freddy <laughs> he says oh you're gonna let me talk you're going to let me talk yes I am going to let you talk okay well thank you then thank you now thank you thank you <laughs> talk to us about that conflicts How can we resolve them things that happen on the human plane in the afterlife you know, is there like a forgiveness? How does that work? Can you talk about that? That's a big topic. Can you talk about that? Forgiveness is just another uh, part of love. It's just another piece of love, he says. It's, it's, it's the same. It's, it's the same. Um, how do you explain it? It's like he shows me like a sun and it's rays of the sun. So the same, um, like if love is the source, a ray of it is forgiveness. That's what he's showing me and symbol symbolism. All right. That's perfect. That is very well described. Thank you. Thank you for that. So how does one go about like making amends or forgiveness or that kind of a thing? I, I have people talk to me about this all the time in session. This is very real, something that people really think about. And it really hurts people here in human body because they hold on to this, the, the pain of the argument or the, and it could be a very, 
horrific experience where it could be like an abuse situation and it's hard to come to terms with that now that the person's dead how do you kind of let go of that or release that or you know how, how do you come to terms with that you know he says well i i i think it depends on the person it's definitely he says it's, it's most certainly a grief process which requires many many layers of what you would say clearing I, I would say release he says release many layers of release it's more about choosing um choosing to to focus on yourself and your own healing and what you need what you need for yourself the parts of yourself that may have been collateral damage from the relationship or the experience those parts focus on those parts and making those parts stronger and getting them to work again you know he says getting them to work again re repairing those parts of yourself or bringing them together so that there's a whole a wholeness again is perhaps the most important thing you can do and so it's not so much about forgiving the other person or forgetting the in the experience or the infliction the moment of the hurt and the extension of it pain is a very powerful vibration and this is freddie you guys pain is a very powerful vibration this is why so many of us are connecting through our hearts now more than ever before and isn't it wonderful isn't it isn't it fantastic isn't it just incredible don't you just love it he's like leaning to me don't you just love it everyone is so wanting to be connected in their heart through kindness and and understanding and, and gentleness and people are tired of being angry it doesn't get you anywhere and just like being hurt is very real and it's very raw for many and there's no time expiration on pain oh it's done okay now i'm better you look at your human bodies there are scars you have scars they are painful reminders and you can't just uh, tell someone to look the other way and forget about it let it go bygones it does not work that is ridiculous that is ridiculous the human mind is like a steel trap he says like a steel trap and it keeps everything too bad it doesn't keep all the good stuff as much as it keeps all the bad stuff isn't that isn't that isn't that quite ironic isn't that quite ironic it, it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever does it except to control or manipulate and that is just not a healthy process and so it is in the heart and in caring for yourself in these ways where you focus on the parts of yourself that were collateral damage or or hurt wounded and bring them back together so that they feel the strength of all of you all parts of you not just one part you could, it's easy to look at one thing and say oh i'm really bad in this so then don't do that then if you're really bad at singing then don't become a singer it's not really that um it's not much more complicated than that focus on something else another part of that maybe you you love music but you can't you you can't um, necessarily have a career as a singer but you love music so perhaps you'll do something different maybe you'll be a producer maybe you'll sell um he says records <laughs> sell records okay we don't do that anymore necessarily he says you know what i mean you know what I mean? You interpret it the way you need to interpret it. <laughs> Sell music, or there's so many ways you could create art for, for album covers, like they have that now, right? Yes, they do, yes, they have branding. We call it branding, marketing, that kind of thing. He says, exactly, so your creative energy could be spent in that, that part of singing or supporting a musician or that kind of thing. You know, he's like, there's other ways so it is with pain and healing and so it is with forgiveness and so if there is an issue or a problem with someone who's not here any longer it's much easier for you to um and he says you know the reason they hold on to the pain so much is because that's the only thing they feel connected to that person with is pain because the relationship didn't have love or that there is not enough of a love that's reciprocated that the person who is in pain can feel it you, 
it is really difficult to penetrate pain. He says it's like a shield. Pain is like a shield and you put it out there so it protects you so you don't get hurt anymore. But it also let, doesn't let the light in, he says. It doesn't let the love in. And in the afterlife, there is pure love. So when that person leaves their body and they move through their healing process as a spirit and fully become spirit more and more and more and more spirit, they become more and more and more pure love. And so when you connect to them, it doesn't feel like them. So the memory of them is the pain that you have, not the love that you had because there wasn't that reciprocation of love. So do you see how this works? Uh, oh, well, I understand how it works. Absolutely. I 100% see that. I 100% see that. Do you understand how it works? He's like, do you understand how that works? Do you understand what I'm telling you? Do you understand about this? So it's on, it's on us. We have the gift to be able to engage, create, and start our own healing process at any time with anyone, regardless of whether they're living or dead, because it doesn't matter how they respond to us. We can, in fact, connect with their higher self, the energy of their godlike self that's connected to love and be in relationship higher self to higher self spirit to spirit and that loving place and so therefore there is an energy of love that we can plug into that person no matter how bad they are or seem to behave or seem to be mentally or in human expression there is a part of them that has a connection to a god creator source universe and that soul concept of wholeness is the part that we can plug into and know but we cannot expect in our human experience to be reflected back any of that because there's no need for the expectation. That's where the disappointment of them not meeting our, our goals are reflecting back to us what we're giving to them. We, we can't get recognition. That's basically what we want is recognition. They did me wrong, so therefore then I'm, I've been wronged. Well, that doesn't heal you. Knowing that someone else apologizes to you doesn't automatically make the situation go away it doesn't make you feel better it doesn't make you magically fine you still have the experience you as the human body being have to process the experience but you can do that at a soul level and at a heart level freddie mercury does the heart energy that clairsentience which moves energy which gives you an empathic energy for yourself it doesn't give you a vulnerability that creates a weakness. It gives you a vulnerability that creates a power inside of you for all the parts of you to come together in a wholeness, to bring everything together, to bring it together, and to see yourself as a whole, not just as fractured pieces or scattered random pieces. Oh, I like this. I like that. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. I'm that. Good. Let's bring all those things together in our heart and connect in. Let's root into that heart chakra energy. Woo, you're getting me all pumped up this morning. My friend, Freddie Mercury, happy birthday to you. Happy body birthday. <laughs> happy afterlife joyful celebration. <laughs> he says, yeah, it is something, isn't it? It sure is something, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I know the viewers would be so disappointed if I didn't do a birthday video for you, so I had to do that. Of course, of course, of course such a pleasure always a pleasure mr freddie mercury in the afterlife and thank you thank everyone i think every one of you freddie appreciates do you appreciate he says i i just love everyone i'm just i'm just love he says oh oh honey i'm just love i'm just love honey <laughs> like yes you are <laughs> i appreciate me, Bridget, here at Above Life Channel. I appreciate you watching. I hope that this video with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife has inspired your spirit, filled you up with hope because this right here and right now is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here, Freddie. I appreciate you.